All right, guys. Hopefully you guys can see this. I have no idea if it's working, but uh, it appears we're live. Uh, welcome to the first edition of Floperator Forum. I'm here with the Canadian legend, Robo Murray. <laughs> Thanks, uh, man. Up. <laughs> and uh, we're going to just jump right into this today. Uh, you know, I'm sure you guys saw on my Facebook page and all over Facebook today, uh, there's been big discussion about the California law, or rather the bill, SB 199. Uh, Senate bill has been proposed by Senators DeLeon, Evans, and Wolk um, in the California State Legislature. Uh, Rob, why don't you go ahead and give us your take? Yeah, um, I mean, there's there's obviously going to be differences between my take on it and my perspective from a, as a Canadian because we treat it differently, and then obviously what I what I watch constantly in the United States. Uh, and specifically in California, just because you guys, you know, as a major importation hub for airsoft equipment, airsoft weapons, uh, you guys are going to be front lines uh, when it comes to uh, legislature, BS that kind of pops up every once in a while, uh, and safety concerns when, in terms of, of public consumption. Um, I mean, the biggest problem that I see with what's going on in California right now is, is what I term today, or what I use as, as kind of a term today, as a blanket law. Um, I get it. I understand it. We should all understand why it's being created. It's to avoid the situation of more 13-year-old kids holding AK-47 air airsoft rifles in public getting shot by police officers. So, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, as a politician, it's easy to say, guess what? Airsoft is gone. We will never have to deal with that problem again. And that's right. really comforting for the public because the public has no idea really what airsoft is. They just see gun and they see 13-year-old kid dead, right? So... Yeah. I mean, it's from our perspective, obviously, it's a little bit BS because we we have a lot more involvement. We know a lot of more details. We are very, very educated on the subject, right? Yeah. Um, now, in terms of how we do it differently in Canada, uh, just as a, a speaking point in relation to what's going on with you guys, um, you know, a couple of years ago, we had a lot of that blanket, that, that blanket uh, law stuff, too, um, where it was, you know, if the gun's all black, if it has metal fixtures on it, if it has, you know, tactical furniture on it, it's a replica weapon, and technically, it doesn't make the gun illegal. Um, it just puts it as a restricted weapon in Canada. So, I mean, we've got different classifications of firearm uh, firearm licenses. One's unrestricted, which means it's like a hunting rifle or a deactivated uh, deactivated replica or antique rifle. And then you get into um, uh, what's called restricted. Now, that usually that actually usually covers most of just handguns. Uh, Canada, the difference between Canada and the States is that we're all about not letting people have handguns or making it extremely hard. So as soon as you have a replica weapon and gets put in that, you need a special class of license. Right. Now, what that does to airsoft in Canada is completely destroys things. I mean, it's not that it would, I guess up front, it would destroy things. We could yeah. adopt a UK system where you literally have to have a firearms license to own a full metal, full blackout, uh, airsoft weapon, right? Um, but in Canada, we changed that last year. Uh, you know, to the enjoyment and freakouts of all of us, that our government looked at it like this. I mean, you know, from our federal, from our federal police force, the RCMP, the, uh, the Canadian legislature, we looked at it and said, look, if the gun shoots between this and this, and that's feet per second, uh, I'll use that as terms uh, for our entire audience, it's feet per second, then right. it's an airsoft weapon, it's a pellet gun, it's unrestricted, it's, you don't need a license, and you just can't use it on in-city property. I mean, you have to be at a licensed field or outside of city grounds. Right. Um, that was huge, because before then, technically, the feet per second range was actually in a dangerous, a dangerous range when we applied to airsoft that if it didn't shoot over 400 or 450 to, say, 500, in which in Canada over 500 is a firearm, whether it's combustion uh, propellant or not, okay. um, that we would, that literally, the only way you could get a full blackout airsoft gun if it was too dangerous to use on a field because it could no longer kill a squirrel. Well, that's that's not what our sport is about. We're not about right. killing each other, right? So, I mean, right. we've lowered that. Now, it's if it's 366 and about three, three, uh, 430, 450 in that range, Totally okay to import, totally okay to have it, but the difference there is, um, that doesn't mean you can't walk, you can walk outside with your gun and be like, yo, I'm an airsoft guy with your gun all like hanging out. I mean, cops will treat it like a real weapon. If that means you get shot, that means you get shot. Right. Um, now, again, here it's a little bit differently because we've got a different culture about guns, so I mean, that factors into it. You don't have as many problems with kids thinking they're toys because we don't treat anything that looks like a gun like a toy here in Canada, but... Um, not saying that you guys do. There's just a lot of that cross kind of, you know, oh, from yeah. steel to to airsoft, right? 
so I mean, I guess as a, so I don't go on a rant about that stuff. I mean, <laughs> when it comes to California legislature, man, I mean, again, it's not a legislature that's there to help people uh, directly. It's an indirect route to cut out a situation that right, could right. cause harm through misuse or irresponsibility. Um, I mean, frankly, I hate using comparisons like this because Second Amendment kind of uh, talks always use comparisons like this, so it's, it muddies it somewhat, but literally, if a kid who's under 18 or under 16, I don't know what your, you guys' official driving laws are uh, there, um, if you're, you know, if you're under age, don't have a license, steal your parent's car, and you crash it through your neighbor's, your neighbor's do uh, front door, that car doesn't become banned, and you don't go to jail. It's your, par it's your parent's responsibility. Right. Uh, which is what it should be. Um, or again, if you're an adult and you're carrying a gun outside of a gun bag, one, cops will treat it like a gun until they arrest you. Uh, mm -hmm. If you get shot, that's because you're doing something you shouldn't have been doing in, in the confrontation in the first place. Right. Uh, but it, it, again, they'll probably and should treat it like a real weapon. I mean, Absolutely. again... Whether you find it jump in for just one sec. Let me jump in for just a second. Yeah, here. Um, go ahead, man. Please. I think we both, should, you know, I just want to get this out there and make sure it's very clear that neither of us is saying that, you know, if a kid gets shot because he's got an airsoft gun, it's not no, a tragedy. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the worst thing about all this is that, right. you know, people are are dying, frankly, because of, of irresponsible ownership, and right. and that, you know, I, we you and I both agree on this that it, it can be traced back farther than just the kid himself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you make it a really good point. Here, here's a whole. Uh, as to educating people, but anyway, I'll let you carry no, on. No, that's that's a perfect point, man. Um, I mean, yes, by all means, I I, I want to actually reiterate in support of your statement there. Uh, we are not saying that these things are not tragedies. These are horrible things to happen. Uh, I mean, they destroy families. They destroy the police officers involved. If that's what we're talking about, you know, what I mean, let's we're talking about humans here. There's a real effect of these things outside of our industry and outside of our concerns. So we're, I mean, my opinion there isn't isn't really towards that specifically. It's about the fact that if there was more forethought in that situation, I'm talking about a specific one in general. Um, but you know how all these things go down. Yeah. If you analyze it in you know hindsight, which unfortunately is the only way we can do it in the moment. Stuff is happening too fast. The mistakes have already been made. Yeah. Um, but when we analyze it in, the, in hindsight, I mean, usually you can see that mistakes were made on both parties. I mean. You know, you sometimes there's mistakes by police officers. It happens. They're humans too. You know, they're not machines, um, and they're just as stressed out as anybody, any of us would having a gun in front of us. Um, yeah. The kids in this case also making a bad call. I mean, whether it's through ignorance or through poor choices, taking your gun outside without a gun bag or a gun case is not a good idea. Uh, yeah. Frankly, it shouldn't be allowed in our industry. We we push it a lot. Um, and the third one, this is this is actually pretty important, um, is. Those mistakes were made a long time ago by the parents. Um, that would never happen if somebody had taken responsibility and set clear guidelines or mentored a new user of such a toy um, to treat it not like one, right? I mean, it's it's a completely different. I mean, this is different than buying Transformers, man. It's, it's yeah, like, I mean, absolutely. It, it's it. There's no there's no comparison. So I mean, it has to be treated differently. I don't care if it shoots real bullets or not, right? So. Yeah, no, I'm I'm 100% with you on that. I, you know, that's one thing that uh, actually I, I believe in California we have actually I know for a fact in California that brandishing a, a replica firearm in any public area is a is a crime. It's an offense. Right. So you know we're very at least here in San Diego. You know I know in our in our local store there's a huge sign on the door that, that quotes the penal code. Uh, you know we. At the store, and, you know, I'm referencing Airsoft Extreme San Diego here. Uh, the staff is really good about, you know, making it very clear that you cannot take this out in public. It is not to be treated as a toy. Um, you know, it's it looks real, it feels real in a lot of cases, and while we know it's not, you know, it's not going to kill anybody. It may get you killed if you're waving it around trying to explain that. If you're walking down the street, it's going to cause a problem. I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. You need to think about these things. And to go back to what you were saying earlier about, you know, where the responsibility lies, my, it is my firm belief that a lot of the responsibility here with, with you know, we'll call them kids, but, you know, anyone under 18 or, or anyone at all who, who owns a, a, an airsoft gun and decides to take it out in public, it is the responsibility for the children, it's the responsibility of their parents, right? The parents need to be aware of the situation. I mean, 
they probably said when looking at the guns or when their kids expressed an interest, man, Billy, that looks really real. Uh, sure you want that? I mean, hello? Yeah, it looks real. If mom and dad think it looks real, what do you think, you know, Officer Buckle's going to say? Right. It, it's not something that you would take outside. So it's a parent's responsibility to set those guidelines and teach the kids, you know, maybe not firearm safety, hopefully, hopefully, but if not, there should be clear guidelines like, listen, you can't take this outside in the street. You can't play with this in a public place. You can't, you know, play at a sanctioned field. Uh, worst case scenario, play in your own enclosed backyard, um, you know, safely. Uh, yep. But again, you know, please play at a sanctioned field first. Uh, and, and, you know, if the parents, part of it, I think, is negligence. You know, I know there are a lot of parents out there who are just like, ah, oh, Billy wants a gun. Here, go play. And, and that's it. You know, and there's no oversight. Um, I think that's where a lot of these tragedies come from. I mean, why is why why are these kids walking down the street with their airsoft guns out in public? To me, that's just totally backwards. Um, it's definitely not something I would ever expect to see here in, in San Diego. At least. And if I did, I would say something God, right away. Right. Um, but another thing that I think is really important for us to, to talk about uh, is something that you and I chatted a bit about on... Uh, on uh, Facebook earlier today, and that's you know community as a whole. Yeah. Uh, part of part of you know I don't I don't hope I don't have any visions of grandeur with with this whole flopperator forum thing. I don't expect it to become you know the next big hit. Not not at all. I'm just glad to be talking with people who right. share interests. Uh, you know, share, excuse me, share similar interests. But it's a it is I think it's really important, and you've said this too. I think it's really important that as veterans in the community. As guys have been around for a little while, we've played for a while, you know, uh, maybe, maybe people look up to us, who knows. Um, I know they do to you, but, you know, it's important for us to turn around and also educate people. Uh, you know, when you, one thing that I, that drives me crazy, it's one of the four rules of firearm safety, right? You finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. I can't tell you how many times I'll go to a game and we'll be standing around doing the safety brief and there's, you know, maybe a 12-year-old, you know, 14-year-old, whatever. Even adults, I've seen this with adults, who are just sitting there twiddling their finger over the trigger, like, oh, you know, no, like, hey, finger off the trigger. Oh, it's unsafe. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, because I've, I've been shot in the throat by a guy who's like, oh, the magazine's out. Yeah, no, that doesn't, doesn't work that way. It doesn't matter. That's, yeah, yeah. That, that's a strong it, point. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's, it's a, I think that it's really important for us as veteran players and for all the veteran players in the community to take a minute and really, you know, talk to both parents and, and kids. I mean, I don't have a problem talking to parents. I... I have a background in, in uh, you know, coaching and, and sports and all that. So I, for me, if, if I see a parent out there with their kid, first, I think it's great. Way to support it. Um, second, I want them to know that the crazy guy with the big old beard dressed up like a <laughs> 30 is not a threatening character. Yeah, he's not trying to steal your kids off the field. <laughs> exactly. I'm not out here, you know, knife somebody in the back of the neck yeah. or, or whatever. Uh, you know, and I want them to know, like, hey, you guys are welcome here. I'm really glad to see you're here. Um, can I just talk to you for a second about safety? Simple safety. Um, you know, that means, you know, for the kid, finger off the trigger. Uh, keep your gun pointed at a safe direction. Hey, how do you guys carry your gun around when you're not at the field? Okay, great. Keep it in the box, you know, or get a gun bag, whatever. And you make them feel included. You make them, you let them know you notice them. And not only does it grow the sport, because then they feel like, oh, hey, this crazy looking dude actually said hi. He, he seems nice. Um, I think I'll keep coming back. But they learn something, hopefully. <laughs> They learn something, and and they can go, you know, they can go home and they can talk to their friends and say, hey, you know, you know, you really shouldn't hold your gun like that. You shouldn't put your finger on the trigger or point it at a person. Like, you know, keep it pointed at the ground. And I've seen this with uh, actually one of my teammates. Uh, his name's Sammy. He goes by Chili. Call sign Chili. And we were we were hanging out last weekend painting guns and stuff. And his little cousin was there. Kid's maybe eight years old. And um, you know, he saw Sammy's gun and he's like, oh hey, can I pick it up? And Sammy's like, yeah, but before you do. Keep your finger off the trigger, point it in a safe direction, not at any of us, okay? And I was like, hey, dude, boom, one, two, that's awesome. Um, you know, to see Sammy step up, I mean, he's you know, 16, that's pretty awesome to see somebody step up right away and really make an effort to teach, you know, what might be the next generation of airsofters. Yep. Okay. So this has been a whole long, you know, rant, not really rant, but a whole long speech about uh, how important it is for us as community members to step up and do the right thing and, and talk about safety and, and, and really just get everybody involved in keeping this hobby, uh, well, alive, frankly. Yeah. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're an impressionist, 
if you're you know just a weekend warrior, if you're out there in shorts and a t-shirt, it doesn't matter. You're playing the, the game, you're you're enjoying the hobby, and we should we should support that. We should be together as a group, you know, in support of that. Whether you like polar stars or gas, right, whatever, it doesn't matter. We're all doing the same damn thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, let's look at the the YouTube questions here. Uh, oh, we got some good some good responses here. Uh, I hope people like your stuff. <laughs> Why did I shave? Uh, I knew that was <laughs> yeah, knew that tell him why you shaved, so. Yeah, he's, a, he's a teammate, too. Come on, Eric. You knew this. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so anyway, let's – are there any – let's just finish up with the bill real fast, the bill specifically. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest things that I've noticed reading through this, yes, and, you know, look, it's right in front of me. Um, one of the biggest things I've noticed reading through this is besides the fact that they struck out half of what was written previously, um, the majority of what I see here is talking about uh, redefining what is an imitation firearm or an imitation weapon, um, changing BB device, which is what airsoft guns used to uh, fall under the classification of, to imitation firearm, which unless it is painted completely, you know, White, bright red, bright orange, bright yellow, bright green, bright blue, bright pink, or bright purple. Or uh, either as the predominant color or in combination, tie-dye or, you know, multi-cam um, Legos. Uh, it's an imitation firearm, which for us is a big problem. Well, that's that's huge. I mean, that's... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to paint it as a huge negative, like a bigger negative than it might be, but, I mean, again... In terms of North America, uh, sure, Canada has the you know Vancouver and uh, the province of British Columbia, which does a lot of Canadian import uh, for airsoft. But 90% of our stuff still comes from the states, and almost 99% of that comes via via California. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a huge issue. Uh, and again, I mean, you pointed out the perfect part that I was explaining at the very beginning, where where Canada is different, and what is kind of screwed up about how they're trying to legislate it in California. California is just taking out the part that says any projectile under the diameter or of six millimeters is a BB gun. They're striking that. They're saying, I don't care how big it is. It could fire dust particles as long as it propels that dust with gas, air pressure, a, sp a compressed spring. It is now a replica weapon if it looks like a real gun. Right. Um, again, that doesn't... That that doesn't provide any sort of logical, uh, you know, logical safety net for key, for for legislating something in or out of an industry. Again, in Canada, we've made it specific. It has to fire a certain speed because it's not the gun or what it looks like uh, that creates it as a dangerous weapon. It's how fast the projectile and the weight of projectile and the type of composition of the projectile that's actually flying through the air. Right. Um, so the biggest problem is the fact that they're just generally striking out any sort of delimiter uh, when it comes to this item versus this item. They're just saying, guess what? If my little peepers think it's a real thing, then we're just going to say it's real. I don't want to learn about it. I don't want to see where its application is, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just going to deal with it by getting rid of it, putting it in the back corner and, and saying nobody can touch it, um, which, you know, it doesn't really make, doesn't make sense to us. I can see how it makes sense to legislators. It's a, it's a, I'm going to do up this. It's going to strike it from the record. Good job. Let's go home on to the next topic. Yeah, um, and that's you know, bucks. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you know, I try above all to avoid politics, um, especially Same. anything related to airsoft. It's my hobby. I do it for fun. God knows I have my opinions, but I, I try to right. keep them to myself. But here, you know, the one thing, the one thing I've noticed, and, and for the record, just so. You know, I have a semblance of credibility on this one. Um, my bachelor's is in international affairs and political science, so I studied for five years on on you know what makes the political mind tick. Yeah. And this is true across the whole world. You know, it seems that politicians just want to take the easiest way out ninety percent of the time, yeah. um, just to get out of the way. That's very true of what's going on with the Second Amendment here, with you know yeah. gun banning and, and all those crazy, you know, all that crazy stuff going on here in, in the United States. And that's also true of this bill. Uh, it's easier for, you know, DeLeon and, and Evans and Wolk and everybody else who's in support of this bill to simply say, okay, we'll paint them all bright green uh, or you can't have them and we're done. Right. Well, as anyone in their right mind will instantly say, so if I go take my real AR and I paint it bright green, right. no one's going to look twice. Is, is right. that what you're getting at? Until I kill someone, you know, like for real. Exactly. It's an obvious problem. Right. Uh, and this is the seeming... You know, it seems to be the easy way out, even though it's definitely not the appropriate response. 
um, in almost anyone's mind, I think. No, not so. You know, if I can cut in for one second on that, I'll, I'll just I'm going to add my also little statement of the politics in there too, just just so everybody's on the same level. Again, you know, much like you said, I try to stay out of politics. Um, in this case, I want you know, I want to give a little bit back to politicians a little bit here. They're only doing the best that they know. I mean, we're talking about people that have to know a very wide range of subject matter. And while in a perfect world, we'd love them to read every single bill that came across the desk. We'd love them to research everything they're voting on. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, we find it. I mean, even myself as a person finds it hard to find enough time to do everything that I know I need to be doing. Right? I mean, it's just a human trait. Right. So, I mean, I'm going to give a little bit back to them and say, and, and go, you know what, this isn't them going, oh, we want to really screw airsofters. It's them going, wow, that looks dangerous, and yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Push it through. Sounds like a good solution. We don't have any more time for this, right? So, uh, you're absolutely correct. I mean, it's 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 not in terms of uh, that you know that they're trying to screw us. Uh, exactly. I would say I would say it's again it's they're doing the best that they know. Unfortunately, it's dealing us a really crappy hand in this matter, right? So, yeah, sorry for the interjection I mean, on that. Just wanted to share my thoughts on the politics too. No, absolutely. I mean, you know, and and, and it's very true. It's you know a lot of it is simple. And I hate to say ignorance because it, it's. It, it is. is. It, it is. is. Anytime you, anytime you don't have a, a, a knowledge base, it's ignorance, whether it's positive or negative, purposeful or unpurposeful, right? So. Right, right. And, you know, it's the hardest thing, and this is something I posted in a couple groups and, and in response to some people. You know, for us, we have a real visceral reaction to this. We have a gut reaction uh, right. because we have a vested interest. I mean, I, I, I know you've done the same thing, but I don't even want to talk about how much money I've put into this damn hobby. <laughs> it's truly sad. Old, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, Beyond that interest, we, we, we enjoy it. And to when someone threatens something you enjoy, and we've seen this with the Second Amendment ar you know, argument, when someone threatens what you enjoy, you react usually out of anger and fear and whatever else, and that's an emotional reaction. And the thing that I keep telling people, and please, everybody watching this, this is really important. If you are going to, and please do, if you are going to contact your representative, Okay, be it in the state of California, or you're going to call from outside the state, or you're going to call your person in your state or wherever, please, please do so with respect. Be firm. Get your point across, but do so respectfully, because the last thing that we need right now, especially when we're facing a bill that can potentially, you know, drive, you know, Evic or Evic or whatever, uh, Airsoft GI and all the other major companies out of California, the last thing we need is to paint ourselves as a bunch of angry, you know, upset guys that run around with toy guns. Um, we need to be, we need to conduct ourselves the way that this discussion is going, with, you know, with control and with, uh, with respect for the other side, even though we disagree. So, you know, call your senators, guys. Uh, I'll, I'll find the links for you and post them up later. Um, but definitely make sure that you do so clearly and respectfully, uh, so that that message gets across loud and clear. Yep. I mean, All right. I, I'll back that up too. I mean, that's actually really, really important. Um, I mean, apply it to your own lives if you need some proof in the pudding. If you have some friend that loves some crazy idea and comes over to your house every day and rants about it, and you have no idea what they're talking about, you're probably not tuning in much. Um, I mean, it's it's going to drive people away more than than create a platform to to discuss this like individuals and, and intelligent individuals at that re respectful individuals. So that's a good point. So yeah, yeah. let's see here. Uh, just going off a couple a couple uh, YouTube comments I'm seeing. Um, to be fair, carrying an airsoft gun is for poor choices is a cop shooting. It's bound to happen. Uh, I think we touched on that earlier. Yeah, definitely agree. You know, and again, that goes back to community and uh, especially parents as well, educating kids and, 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 you know, teaching them what's right and what's not right as far as where to take your gun and what to do with it. Um, yeah, it's absolutely, absolutely valid point. Uh, we've got another, lots of people talking about airsoft safety. Good job, guys. Glad to see that. Safety before flopperation. Well, totally actually, I'll, I'll, you know, if I can touch on that, too. I mean, you, yeah. you touched on this, too, but I'll give you a, my two cents on it. Um, and I'm actually really enjoying that a lot of people are saying that. If you see me looking that way, it's because I've got a second computer behind me. I'm not just pointing at some blank spot in my wall pretending. Um, I am actually glad that, that a lot of people are taking the safety issue um, as a priority. Um, there's one wall, though, that I see that, that limits how much that, that kind of information gets spread around our sport. Uh, you know, just the fact of matter of how our sport came to North America, it came actually pretty pretty exclusively. I mean, it was small groups of people that even knew about Airsoft. It's small groups of people that participated in it. 
And anything that starts off with that sort of ex exclusivity, there's always going to be some sort of like defensive wall up there, you know, like that, that core original members who don't want to share any of the, the trade secrets, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, but that's actually, that's completely opposite to what firearms, like the firearms industry is actually a quite open uh, community because, again, they've already established over, you know, hundreds of years of firearms being, a, being in existence mm -hmm. that, number one, there's this. There's the safety rules you don't break. If you don't follow them, you're no longer a part of the community. No ends, ifs, or buts. There's no way to get around that, right? So I mean, number one, there's that emphasis put right at the beginning that you need to you need to perform on this level. If this is the bare minimum you're going to perform on, and the other side of it too is, I mean, once you get past that in the firearms community, there's a ton of companies, ton of people, tons of teachers that spread knowledge all the time. It actually is their business. Um, while you know, while a lot of these guys get paid to do range courses and things like that, I mean, go on YouTube for a half a day. I mean, everybody loves a Chris Costa video. Everybody loves a, a Travis Haley uh, uh, video. Why are these guys putting that information out? Because it's a shared community. Um, always has been. It's how the firearms industry continues to thrive. It's how the tactical community continues to thrive. Unfortunately, in Airsoft, uh, you know, it, it's a problem in Canada. It's a problem I see across the world. It's a problem I, I picked up on in, in the United States as well is that, we still have these divisional lines where it's like, oh, you're not good enough to know this piece of information, even if it's safety information, so therefore, F you, go away little kid kind of thing, or go away weird guy who comes to every Sunday event, but no one talks to him because he doesn't talk to anybody, so we're just not going to deal with him kind of thing. I mean, it's right. time for us to realize that isn't, this is no longer an exclusionist sport. It's no longer a little island of special people. This is a, a rapidly growing industry that is going to make a lot of people a lot of money at some point in time. I mean, the big companies and whatnot. So it's in their best interest to pump, make the industry bigger too. So whether we like it or not, more and more people are going to join our sport. And unfortunately, there's one of two things that can happen. One, we could pay, we could pay no attention to those people. And we're going to have a lot more kids walking outside with, with airsoft weapons that are fully blacked out, that have no gun case, have no respect for firearm safety because they don't consider them firearms. They're used to taking it lighthearted, like blowing some kid's head off in, in COD or, or Battlefield or you know the Nerf guns they grew up with. And then they don't have the parents to say, man, these are kind of crazy and look like real guns. Maybe you shouldn't show that to a cop, right? I mean, without all that interactivity, we're going to, have, we're going to see more of these problems. Um, the second, the second part is we could choose not to go that way. Um, I mean, I'm big. I know you're you're huge on this. Uh, the airsoft operators team I play for in, the, in Canada make this a part of our, our 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 operation as a team, and that is mentorship. I mean, we are so far away from the mindset of pushing people away because we see that's eventually going to harm our industry. Whether that keeps me safe from having to deal with a bunch of people I don't know, and frankly, I'm the person who doesn't care. I love to talk to people, but let's just say you're somebody who doesn't really like talking to people. Okay, I understand that. But past a point of you not wanting or feeling comfortable enough to mentor somebody, mm -hmm. if nobody mentors anybody, we're going to be in more problems. Um, so it's one of those things where the community has to take those extra steps too, to go, look, if I want my, my industry to survive and thrive, we have to start again taking it upon ourselves uh, to really push these fundamentals. You know, like, you know, if some 16 year old kid who's really educated in firearm safety gets airsoft weapons and all of his friends like idolize him for it and want to get into the sport, that kid needs to tell his two friends that are interested what it's all about. Or parents need to educate themselves and teach their kids what it's all about. Frankly, yeah, I know a lot of stores do a really good job at this, but I don't see it often enough. Take the extra five minutes before that kid walks through the door swiping his Visa card or whatever you're, you're doing as a transaction and develop something that gives a basis of this information before they even walk out the door. Now, does that do anything, you know, does that help 100% of the time? No, but it's at least we're trying. All of us are trying our little tiny piece to make a big difference somewhere in, in terms of airsoft, right? So, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, guys, I just want to let you know I just updated the uh, description of this video so that if you go there check it out at the bottom of the description there's a link to Killing Angels Airsoft Team it's a good buddy of ours here uh, mine and DevTac as a whole uh, here in San Diego they have been really pushing uh, to get this thing this bill taken down and you know to, to support our hobby uh, so go to their page one of the very first uh, post at the top talks about the bill and then they post uh, an example letter a sample letter you could send as well as links to contact the senators here in California.
All right. Um, there's one more thing that, before we move on to a new topic, because yep. you know, I'm kind of beating a dead, ho dead horse here, talking circles, but... <laughs> yeah, we're really picking on those politicians and safety freaks, right? <laughs> those, those poor guys, I almost feel bad. Uh, no, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you know, one of our, one of our viewers here, Randall, uh, in, in California, mentioned something about how uh, folks in other states might think that it only affects us here in California, but that's not mm -hmm. true. The manufacturers ship their products to California, and then it gets distributed from here. And that means that the guns would have to be modified before even arriving in our docks. Yep. So for those of you guys who are watching and you're thinking, oh, I live in New York or, or Alabama or you know Colorado, whatever, <laughs> Colorado. Um, and, and this won't apply to me, well, two things. One, it will spread. I promise you that. Uh, once it takes over California, it's going to keep going. And two... Uh, just like Randall said, you know, products hit California first, and if they can't even come into this state uh, without being modified, we're going to end up needing to pay extra when we order things to get them shipped over, painted, or whatever, and have to redo it later. It's just a huge nightmare for all of us, and it, it will truly effectively kill our hobby yep. if we allow it to. Well, consider this. So, I mean, you know, all you need yeah. to do is spend 20 minutes on the internet to find out how pe how annoyed people are when they have to paint an orange tip or replace an orange tip because it was imported into California. Okay, yeah. so now the rule is the gun's got to be clear. The gun's got to be like, you know, I love calling it this zombie, like Crossman zombie killer green, you know what I mean? Like oh, some ridiculous color, right? I mean, think yeah. about that. Think about that on a large scale where you can't get anything different. And now we're not talking about a flash hider that costs you 15 to 40 bucks, depending on what quality and who you're buying it from, uh, to replace on the orange or a, a $5 can of spray paint. We're talking about an entire gun. Now we're talking about those items becoming very niche items, hard to import. Why? Again, and, and again, the, the commenter actually, perfect point here. Like I said earlier, 99%, and that's an exaggeration, but it's damn near close to almost the majority of airsoft weapons that hit North America come in through California. Right. If those won't land without these modifications already in place, it is going to be exorbitantly expensive to have anything modified for any other state. You're talking about not a flash hider again. We're talking about somehow roundabout uh, importing things like full upper and lower receivers, which probably come through California first on their way to somewhere else, which means yeah. they can't be imported. So I mean, it's it's not something that's just going to event, uh, just going to affect California. I mean, in the long run, the if Cal if this is what really becomes a trend, you're going to see it spread like flu. It's going to start being adopted across the world to uh, avoid these terrible situations and look at the easy answer that California came up with. Um, immediately, though, you're going to see that major importation and customization problem. I mean, it's, it's going to be a massive problem on, on, a, on a whole global, well, at least on North American scale for now. Again, you know, we could. We could absolutely switch over to a, a system like, uh, like what is found in the UK where, you know, you need a, a restricted firearms license to own a fully blacked out gun. If you don't, when you go to a field, you got to bring your bright neon blue upper lower receiver M4 or whatever. And that's, you know, that's fair. We're, we would have to adjust to that. But, I mean, again, that even in itself would cause a lot of changes to what we're used to. There's, there'd be no more 12-year-olds running around with airsoft guns, I'll tell you that. Right. Right. And and that's just, you know, it's it's going to be a real shame if, if this thing passes, which it won't. Oh. But, uh, you know, we're going to fight it tooth and nail. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we'll end up being all right here. But, uh, you know, we can't take this one sleeping, guys. We can't take this one laying down. So, mm -hmm. with that, we're going to go ahead and move away from the bill, which I think we've covered... Oh, solid 30 minutes. Absolutely, man. <laughs> solid 30 minutes of this uh, discussion yeah. today. So let's move on to a new topic here. Um, why, not, why not keep it with a contentious discussion and go with, uh, you know, attitudes within the community? All right. Um, you touched on this briefly earlier. Yep. You're talking about, uh, you know, how, how there are guys out there who show up and are immediately shunned or who, you know, Come out and uh, would just want to, you know, ignore everyone else or kind of, you know, pretend like they're they're better than everybody. Um, yep. Take it off. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, no, that's and I, yeah, I did sort of touch on this, and that's an important part. I mean, um, you know, industry in itself, and this is what I touched on earlier. We can't be exclusionist, but I mean, let's really break it down to you know something easily understood logically. I mean, we're not, you know, depending on the personality type you are or are not. 
some of you who are watching or some people who you know won't get the, the mindset that we need to mentor people because that's a good thing. You, you meet friends, you make the community stronger, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, those are the, the higher level benefits of, of being a Absolutely. community in our, with our industry. So let's get rid of all that higher end stuff that some people who don't have an A type but friendly personality to go out there and meet people can understand. Yeah, Mentorship yeah. doesn't have to be about you teaching people. It can be about you protecting the things you love. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, if we're talking about Airsoft is in danger because we have irresponsible owners, irresponsible parents if, if we're talking about younger kids, uh, irresponsible or uneducated or ignorant politicians, et cetera, et cetera, um, oh, he's putting on the helmet. Um, we, should, we should, at a bare minimum, even if you don't want to make any friends, mentor people to save your own butt. I mean, Absolutely. mentor people to keep our sport alive. I mean, mentor people to grow fields. Mentor people to engage them and keep them buying stuff and keep, uh, you know, keep motivating fields to grow or new fields to appear. I mean, that's our major problem in Canada. We're so spread out. We've got more landmass than you guys in the states, and we've got about a fifth of your population. Population density is not our friend. <laughs> that's, so I mean, it's hard for fields to grow when you've got a kid who shows up one day loving airsoft, everybody shuns him, and he never comes back ever again. Or you've got a kid who walks around downtown Toronto in Canada with an airsoft gun, uh, like what we saw in California, what we've seen in other places. I mean, that won't help us in any shape or form. And again, I don't care if it's if it's on a level that you actually appreciate doing these things, or if you need to remain egotistical and, and keep something safe for you, keep the sport safe for you. Teach kids about at least safety and the bare minimum what they need to know so you can enjoy still participating in the sport, even if you don't care if little Timmy can. You know what I mean? Like, there's a big, big, big gap that we need to fill in, I think. No, oh, absolutely. I totally agree. And just for the sake of the argument about people with too much gear, you know, the whole shunning and whatever, ta-da, um, time, time to, you know, put on the floperator dome. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll go get mine, too. <laughs> Dude, seriously, do it. All right, helmet time, guys. Let's, let's get this real serious here for a second. So, <laughs> I can't even take myself seriously. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I even did my straps up, man. I don't see your straps on, but you got the old, the old uh, cool guy night vision. <laughs> you know me, dude. I, uh, I don't even. I'll run around with these off half the time. <laughs> it feels so derpy with it on, that's, dude. That's why I got to put it under my beard, man. My beard has gotten to a length. You people who actually love my beard will love this. If I do this, it's like so ridiculously tight, and it makes my beard go all stupid that I just lengthen the straps and put them under my chin. And said, screw it. Hey, that, that works, man. I had to do that before I trimmed up, so yeah, I, just, I just run around like this. It's like, screw it. I don't even care. Yeah. It's not, not going to fall off. It's, no, it's on there pretty good, so. Well, Octile or h Napes uh, help that, man. They've got, you know, it's got like, the little hand that holds the helmet to your back of your head without the strap. Right, yeah. Well, I'm looking at the, the Team Windy Cam Fit, actually, but I'm having a hard time justifying $100 for, you know, a, a, basically, you know, a bump helmet. It's, uh, it's not exactly going to stop a bullet. Uh, well, actually, not even close. Yeah. So, yeah, it's you know, 100 bucks for that's kind of like, oh, which is really, it's funny considering the other things I've spent $100 on for this. Well, this. I mean, let's, I mean, we'll put it this way. I mean, for now, you haven't yet convinced yourself that that $100 is some, somehow expendable when it comes to your wants and desires. Given enough time, that'll probably change, though, you know? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm reading through our comments right now. We've got some, got some good ones here. Uh, oh, here we go. This is, this is going back to our discussion, getting us back on trap. Uh, Ellipsis117 says, uh, the only people that annoy me are the ones who think that what you own is that uh, have very fast RPS guns because I just think they can't aim. Um, we'll touch on the, the, round, the rounds for a second in a minute here, but I want to talk about the gear. Um, I also want to return story. us to the RPS after, too. So that's, that's yes, yes, yes. I'm, uh, as a gas guy, I'm all over that. But... Um, you know, it's funny. I, I recently had the, the pleasure and honor of helping out at, uh, you know, Bob the Axe Man's training camp. Yeah. Unfortunately, there weren't a whole lot of videos, so no one really knows I was there, but uh, <laughs> I was. And, you know, it was really nice to be there amongst, it was designed for kids. And this is, you know, again, our, our airsoft attitude in our community and safety. I got a chance to, to kind of coach, if you will, um, you know, and, and got the chance to be out there with a lot of the young guys that are coming into the sport and the hobby. And one of the things, though, that I, I thought this was re really interesting of myself, at least, you know, 
those of you guys who are friends with me on Facebook or have seen the photos and asked questions, you know that I've got the real cry G3 pants. This is a, a real cry cover. Um, shit, I got you know, Ferro, Ferro Concepts plate carrier. I spend a lot of money on my gear. But I was there rocking my teammate Eric's uh, JPC, OTT's JPC, and kids kept coming up like, oh, are those real cries? I'd be like, yeah, no, yeah, they are. Oh, is that a real JPC? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it is. And by the time they got to, oh, is that a real helmet cover? I'm like, oh, my God, I'm such a dick. <laughs> I just felt really, I felt really awkward saying, yeah, I've got all this expensive gear because I, I really do think that some, not always, but sometimes there, there's an attitude that can come with that, that, you know, you're somehow better because you have expensive gear. I mean, it's one of the great things about this term flopperator, and, and the reason I love using it is that, you know, people people come up and they'll be like, "Oh my God, dude, you look like uh, you look like you're straight out of Zero Dark Thirty, or you you look like this real operator." I'm like, "No, guys, honestly, I'm just another dude out there to have fun with this with this hobby. Um, I just you know spend all of my uh, my rent money on my gear, uh, <laughs> and that makes me no better than anyone else as far as you know gameplay goes or or whatever else. It certainly isn't like a a sudden plus five armor boost to uh, to put on the uh, the helmet here, yep. but um, yeah, you know, there's there's there is definitely an attitude um, among in, in certain circles of, of people that just think because I've got all cry gear or all evil or whatever, you know, LBT that that somehow instantly makes you a better player, makes you not even that, makes you better than other players at the field right. on a, a value level, a human value level, which is yes. I mean, let's be real, you know. I I've, I've been killed by a kid with a clear springer. Yep. That's embarrassing, but just because I'm wearing cries does not make me better than anybody else. I don't do right, that, especially as a human being. Yep. No, that's that's a strong point to make, man. Um, you know, I, I, that kind of comes from that. I think a lot of that crossover. So I mean, you know, airsoft in itself, obviously, because we're you know to sport replicating the real world, we'd like to think that we buy all the same stuff uh, as real guys and things like that. You know, once you've kind of got a you know you've adapted to buying stuff that looks real, the next logical step is you want the real stuff. I mean, there are very logical and, and valid reasons why you would want to buy real steel stuff. It is much better constructed, usually to better proportions, uh, for North Americans at least, than what we can find in the repo market. Um, and because of that, um, we've got basically two applications of Airsoft that, that kind of muddy each other a bit with that upfront presentation of people already looking at real steel and idolizing it. We've got Airsoft Impressionists and Airsoft players. Um, I mean, so impression, I'm not saying that Impressionists don't play, and I'm not saying players don't, don't become Impressionists. And there isn't crossover. But for, the, for kids who don't know the difference, um, they see a lot of the talk about, look how awesome my actual JPC rig is, or look, I just bought a, a first spear strand hog, you know what I mean, like for $500 yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. I mean, yes, really cool stuff, but for someone who's uninitiated into our sport, I mean, again, it's like flashing gold and bling in front of somebody. They think, you're, they think that you're an awesome person just by pure visuals, and that's not the case in anything uh, well, it's not the case in anything in life most of the time, is from my right. experience. But in terms of athletics or a sport, it is most definitely not the case. Uh, and again, I, I use a lot of my research comes from the real steel market, or you know, a lot of what I apply to airsoft comes from understanding real steel uh, tactics, mindsets, techniques, you know, modern battlefield snares, things like that. And that is, you know, again, spend some time looking into that, and you'll quickly find. That the mindset of the real a real person firing a real weapon, especially in a combat scenario, it's not about the gear, it's not about the gun, it's about the human using those things. Absolutely. Uh, yes, yes, a better you know a perfectly suited weapon, you know something super high tech, high speeds, got all the gadgets on it, uh, and gear that's five hundred dollars for a plate carrier or whatever, you know it looks good, it's stitched well, um, it does come with its benefits, but that is all supplemental. Um, I mean, you can take a human, give them jeans, a t-shirt, and like you said, a clear springer, but give them real-world tactics, real-world problem-solving and thinking skills, and they will beat people who are fully decked out in Eagle industry stuff, who are carrying like the best PTW on the face of the planet, if they are uninitiated in those same other basic traits. Um, and that's where a lot of people get confused. They, they attribute the gear as in skill acquisition, and that's just not the case. Absolutely. Uh, 
I mean, one of my favorite favorite quotes to to keep uh, you know reiterating to people on that on that standpoint. Um, and psst, there might be a shirt relating to this soon. Uh, is that you know I mean weapons are tools. I am the weapon. You know what I mean? Like it's absolutely it's conditioning yeah, absolutely. human body and mind to become a weapon rather than depending on the tools. Tools will fail. You never will if properly conditioned and have the proper mindset. No, oh, 100%. 100%. Uh, and that's, you know, again, that, that goes back to, um, actually, that's a perfect segue to the, the rounds per second debate. Um, but before we jump in there, a couple more of these comments here. <laughs> I, uh, I, my buddy yeah, Jim Rogers I gotta is totally sure, supporting I, me on you know, this one. Sure <laughs> uh, Tyler, Tyler Martin, I got you, dude. I saw your comment. Um, I will help you getting my old kit squared away. Yeah. Um, Let's see what else we got. Uh, optics. We'll get to optics in a minute here. And there's another good. Oh yes, Jamie N says I buy a lot of real gear for the quality, whether new or surplus. It lasts and it's tough as hell. Yeah. I completely agree. Yeah, there's um, a huge benefit there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely agree. You know, there's, there's something to be said for for real gear. Um, a lot of manufacturers will back it up with a, uh, a good warranty. Um, quick, quick plug for totally. By the way, totally unpaid for plug here. Uh, <laughs> Fair, Fair Concepts, you know, so. Riley at Ferro Concepts, uh, the guy's rock star. I, I love the product. I, I bought an FCPC off of him, and uh, it's backed by a lifetime warranty. Um, period. That's it. So, you know, to get those kind of that kind of uh, care coming from a company is, it's, to me, it's a big deal. Yep, um, no, that's, that's huge. And that's one of those. That's one of those benefits of buying real steel. Um, yeah, now, I mean, I, I urge people to be smart about it. If you don't, if you've never worn a style of plate carrier before. You should not be, as an airsofter, spending $500 testing that plate carrier out. There are, I mean, again, unless we're talking about something really exclusion, uh, exclusionary, like um, or exclusive. Sorry, that's not even a word. Um, like we're talking Eagle Industries. I was looking at this one the other day. Someone had a question on, on IG about it. I saw that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Eagles and industries like modular plate carrier that they have that that they're releasing in AOR one soon. Uh, super rare, super expensive. I mean, that doesn't have a repro on the market, but most other things do, unless we're talking about the most advanced technology in the market. I mean, you can easily, as a new player, not get caught up in, in saving $400 for one piece of gear and buy five pieces of gear for that same amount of money, giving you all that you would need to succeed in Airsoft right away and get a good feel for what you actually want to wear. I mean, that's that's the important part. Totally. I mean, you know, it's, it's fun for me, especially, because I've gone through a couple different kits. Um, my... Very first, sorry, I know you can't take it seriously right now. <laughs> <My> very, <laughs> oh, it's, kit, oh, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, very first kit actually was a uh, it was a simple condor chest rig, which irony being, uh, or rather coincidence being what it is, uh, I just re uh, bought back, you know, after what it's been like four years, I just bought it back from a guy. Uh, the same thing, it's my it's my original chest rig, and uh, I started out with a chest rig, you know, ACU, uh, UCP pants. Uh, random, I still have this jacket, random tan condor jacket. I mean, it was a mess, and that's actually part of why I got my, my call sign, which I'll go into again later. Um, but, you know, it, it was totally not high speed um, by any stretch of the imagination, but it worked. It worked, and I, I was able to shoot people. I could get kills with it, and, and you know what? That's what matters. So it's matters. again, it's 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 about experience in the sport, not about how cool your gear is. And I again, I, I want to make that distinction that I know that there is a very fine line between good players with cool gear and players who think that gear is where it's at. I mean, again, you don't. I really want to stress that you don't need professional quality stuff that saves people from IED explosions, real bullet kills from you know 600 meters away, et cetera, et cetera, to be successful in airsoft. So if ever you find that your airsoft uh, career or whatever your involvement becomes about spending all of your money just to look good. Uh, while this is an opinion piece alone, I might get some hate mail on this one. Uh, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. I'm sorry. In my opinion, if you aren't enjoying airsoft as a physical sport and you're playing it as dress up 150% of the time and your bank account is crying for that reason, uh, well, my bank account's crying too, but I have a lot more fun playing than worrying about what exact gear I have. Yes. I do have real steel gear at times. That is a choice that I leave out of the public sphere. It's that lets me play better if I make that decision, and it comes totally. with a decision with with data behind it. You know, so I totally. want to make that statement that it's it's yeah. a fine line we still tread between real, like, oh man, you got all the real gear, and people just need to get out and play sometimes without worrying about that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, there's, you know, I'm looking at the comments again. We got a good one here from Executives Airsoft. Uh, it says, because of the fact that I and my teammates wear nicer gear, uh, and we have been considered unapproachable because other players consider us elitist. Um, that actually is a perfect comment uh, mm-hmm. with regards that's, to... That's, that's a great one, dude. Yeah, you know, and I, I totally... I've been there, too. Um, I've been there, too. You know, like like I said, the Bob the Bob event, you know, the, the training camp. I'm walking around in all my gear, and fortunately, you know, I was, I was helping. I wasn't just there. Um, so I actively was being approached by people, but you know when people get that that idea, because I, I definitely you know I'm guilty of it too. I've judged people before um, based on their gear. Uh, similar yeah. situation. Not too much of a low quality. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm just glad you're out there. But the guys with the real expensive stuff, it's like, ooh, I don't know if I can talk to them. They've got you know I, I don't know what's the most expensive plate carrier these days. Cry CPC in AOR three. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Whatever it may be, yeah. Yeah, but you know, it's like you look at these guys. You're like, Jesus, I don't, I don't know if I can, I, I don't know if I'm. Can I talk to them? Is it? Right. And, and that's that's where you have a great opportunity. It's a perfect opportunity as the person wearing the awesome gear to walk over to the guys you see kind of looking at you sideways and be like, Hey, what's happening? How you doing? And start a conversation. Yeah. Uh, it totally opens up a whole new window, and and I think really. You know that's that's what it's about is meeting people and making them feel welcome, um, especially when you're because you know if people are looking at you like that, they expect big things from you, and they're looking up to you. Yep, and that's a perfect point, man. I mean, it, again, that kind of loops back in that that piece that you'd asked me about. Uh, you know, where is our responsibility in this? It's and it's 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 important to understand that again. You know, not that I know the guy; I've never talked to him. Um, but he's one of those guys in the sphere that I could see this is great potential of happening. I mean, we all know Mankind, or I can't remember what his old, what his, the old name he used to roll by. Uh, the quintessential kind of like dev crew kind of uh, uh, impressionist before kind of Dev Team 6 appeared. Um, I mean, if you're stocked in full real steel gear and you're standing in front of a bunch of kids who are 10 years younger than you, it's not their responsibility to grow the balls to come up and talk to the person 10 years older. It's for you to grow the balls and brains to understand that that kid is terrified of you and he <laughs> he shouldn't be, period. I mean, it's, again, when I, was, when I was 14, I wouldn't have talked to some 25 to 30-year-old guy who looked like he knew what he was doing. Absolutely and, not. As a 25 to 30-year-old, I sometimes don't have the attention and time to realize that there's kids like that, but it's up to us to take that time. And then yeah. again, bridge those gaps, man. Bridge the gaps. Say, hey, what's up, dude? Oh man, is that is that your new gun? You know, or is that a new piece of gear? Oh, here's a suggestion for that gear. But hey, if it works for you, that's cool. If it doesn't, no problem. You know, come talk to me anytime. It's something right. I think is important that every time you show up at a field, every time you see a new player, heck, even if it's not a new player, if it's something you see returning all the time, um, go out, extend your hand, uh, reach out to them, bridge those gaps, teach those people something, show them a reason to, to learn as much as you do. I mean, that's the big part. A lot of us are really, really passionate about this sport, so we spend a lot of our free time, money, uh, sacrifice relationships, whatever it may be, to to involve ourselves so heavily. Well, we should be spreading that love for the sport to other kids. We should be showing kids and you know, people who aren't as initiated as, I, don't, I focus, I say the word kid a lot. I mean, anybody who isn't as involved as us, uh, spread that love to them so they can get as involved. Two yeah. things will happen. Airsoft will grow, and I bet you safety concerns will become more minimum than the, uh, minimal than they are right now. Because, again, if you take someone who's involved like me, you, um, a lot of guys in the scene, people like Dave Bax, et cetera, et cetera, I mean, we understand why airsoft's important, everything that goes along with that, because we're so involved. So we should be inviting people to get so involved with us. Again, that's on us. It's on us as veteran players to reach out the hand and say, hey, dude, you're new, or I see you here all the time. What can we do to help? Period. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you're getting called out here by Jim Rogers. Saying, Damn, Jim. Well, you know it's 80% about the look. Yeah, uh, it is. Now, again, I actually <laughs> don't feel that one. Um, no, Jim yeah. brings up an excellent point. Uh, yeah. Jim, like, going back even one sec, sec yeah, before that, Jim says, buy gear that works for you, fits you, and meets your needs. Anything above and beyond is a waste of money, uh, but like buying Gen 3 uh, nods versus Gen 2. Um, yeah. The first bit, Jim, to- I completely 100% agree. Buy gear that works for you, fits you, and meets your needs. Uh, beyond that, I wouldn't say waste of money. I go more with it's a luxury. Um, you know, In some cases, it might be a little more helpful. I, I, 
I'm not nearly uh, schooled well enough on on, on uh, the, the subtleties between Gen 2 and Gen 3 night vision systems. Yeah. Um, these are fake in case anyone hasn't figured that out yet. So but, I'll, uh, give you, I'll give you a point of reference on there. There's a bunch of yeah. our guys, uh, Jim being one of them. Um, I have access to them too at times. I don't own them. Uh, but there's a lot of guys in our crew uh, in the Ontario. Like Ontario is a province. It's like a state like California here in Canada for anybody who doesn't know that. Uh, there's a lot of our, our guys in the local community they actually they have spent a lot of money time uh, getting real night vision systems. There's even a thermal system floating around. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, speaking, of, speaking of night vision systems, have you seen the new uh, HD NVGs out there? <laughs> I hope you saw my facial reaction there. No, not at all. What, what's Dude, going on there? Um, no, uh, who is it? I want to say Adams Industries just released a photo. I think a lot of you guys who are watching have seen this. They just released a photo of their... Uh, gen, I think it's a Gen three or whatever generation, but HD NVG. And so uh, we're going to be looking through like uh, sand. Pretty green. much, dude. Yeah, no. It's what it looks like is well, Gen threes. You know, I was for for those of you that you know, not to humble brag for a second. For those of you guys that haven't seen the photos in my terrible, terrible video, I actually was lucky enough to use a real set of uh, GP NVG eighteens yep. at an ITS event a while back. Um, and it, there's unbelievable clarity with the Gen 3 systems. Um, you know, once once you're out beyond a certain, like, you know, like right here, I'm, I'm, it's fuzzy. You know, you get out 10, 12 feet, and it's, it's much clearer. But the HD MVGs incorporate a red hue that seem, in the photo, seem to target green patterns or green colors. So whereas with the, you know, typical uh, Gen 3 system, you would just see a lot of green, hopefully clear, um, well, in with a flat with HD picture at that point, right? What's that? It's a flatter picture when you're using only one hue, right? I mean, the, the human eye is conditioned to see three colors of light and 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 sh and hues or shades, I should say. Um, you know, black, white, and then three colors. Anytime you take away colors down to two or one of those colors, you're going to get a, a depth perception problem, right? So, I mean, I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. They add the red hue back in at RGB. And you get a little bit more clarity, you get a little bit more high fidelity picture, right? Yeah, that's what I mean. That's what it seemed like. The, the photos link it to you, and and, and uh, yeah, for those people watching, I'll put it on the in the event page and also on on my personal page. I think I shared it there. But you, you know, it's it's unreal how much more you can you know how much clearer the images and how you can make out new things that they were visible. They were visible, but it's much faster uh, eye acquisition, at least, or you know, if you want to go with that. It's it's easier to spot right away. There's none right. of this time delay and like is that what yeah. There's there's not that like time it takes your brain to understand that it's seeing actual things out of yeah. just in a green world. You know that we're not used to. Um, actually, I want to just want to touch out. You had touched on what Jim said, and I want to clarify only because I know Jim and Jim. You can punch me in the neck if I'm if I'm misspeaking for you here, uh, and you probably will at some point in time. <laughs> um, I want I don't think Jim really meant that. You know, you buy gear that's that suits you and works for you, and anything above that is unnecessary. I don't think he means that there's a cutoff past buying. Like, you know, you buy all Condor, and it will suit you, and it will let you play really well because it's a system that that benefits your you know combat situation. Um, I would say he more meant in in terms of if your only goal is to buy the most expensive stuff, whether it works for you or not, that's a waste. I mean, there is still, and I, Jim would agree with me uh, definitely that you know, again, there is a benefit if, as a player, let's let's say you've got a repro JPC. Um, if you decide to at some point move up to a real Cry JPC, you shell out the extra two hundred bucks and you buy that. That is not a wasted investment as long as you have a real decision reason behind doing that. Whether it's the warranty, the quality, whatever, you know what I mean. Um, yeah. You know, I would say there are some things, yes, that I would say are, are a complete waste. If you're buying an IED crotch protector, a hundred percent chance that will never come into play and probably will never help you play airsoft better. But I think the clarification, like I said, Jim, I hate speaking for you, big, big guy, but you know, I think that's more what he meant on that one. It um, looks, it looks like it. Reading yeah. from the comments, it looks yeah, like she, that one. You know what we should do? We should touch on something before we forget because it was a couple of comments back. Let's go back to that RPS conversation. Sure, I love yeah, that. Yeah, this will be fun. Well, while we do that, I'm going to pull out my trusty gas gun here and just go. Please do. Because, hey, I mean, see, I'm, not a I'm not a gas guy yet, right? So um, I've got AG. So I've, I've got a vested interest in this RPS race. I've, you know, from, in Canada, 
there isn't the RPS race like I see in the United States. Yeah, look at him stroke that gun. It's a beautiful gun, by the way. Everybody look at it. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'll stop moving and talking so the camera will go back to you. And you oh, no, I already. Yeah, it's all good. I can apparently <laughs> click between the two. Good, good. Yeah, can't. If my beard gun, right? Um, I mean, I you know, I saw crazy videos coming out of, and this isn't a negative towards Evike or Evic. Again, I don't know how to pronounce it even after many years in the I industry now. I don't think anybody does, actually. I don't think anybody does, man. They, whatever. Uh, it was either Evike or, or Airsoft GI. Um, they had put out some crazy videos, like, you know, like 45 round per second AEGs that they were cooking up. Um, and, you know, I get it. Humans, uh, they love big numbers. If you can get good gas mileage per, per mile in city or highway driving, people love a good number. Uh, if you can win a lot of money through the lottery, people will flock to it, right? The bigger the number, uh, the greater the excitement generally a human will feel. Unless we're talking about space, and then we just don't understand the big numbers, right? That, yeah. But in terms of rounds per second, I'm going to take 30 seconds to explain why I hate people focusing on high rounds per second. Um, while I don't, I don't necessarily prescribe to what the comment was, and that was people go for high rates of fire because they can't shoot. Uh, that's not necessarily the case. It's high rates of fire do help in balancing out the natural deficiencies of the physical flight uh, inaccuracies of airsoft versus what people expect from real steel. These things are not traveling 800 meters per second. They are not traveling for you know a, mi a mile at at, at at best cases. We're talking you about play with the soap if you can hit that 150 and 200 foot mark and you're hitting things, like it's a good day, man. Like you have set your things up right. Totally. So I mean, there, is val there is a valid uh, statement to the fact that the more rounds you can put in the air, there is a greater chance you will hit the human, right? But let me state something very clearly. That is, to a point, makes sense. Past a certain point, it becomes something that I consider unsafe. I consider it something that takes away from the fun of airsoft, and I'll explain it very simply this way. Uh, let's say that you are toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody 100 feet away. You both see each other. You see that this person fires a gun at you uh, or an airsoft weapon at you. It's going to take a certain amount of time for those projectiles to come at you. We're not going to do the physical calculations here. I don't want to confuse anybody. Sorry, I'm a science nerd. Um, and it's going to take the human being being shot at a very defined set of time to expire to move out of the way or even to first decide what to do. Now, in that time, even at the most, even if the quickest, most attentive person uh, starts to dodge or get behind cover, let's say they don't quite make it and they start getting hit with, with whatever was coming at them, if right. you're firing a gun that has shot in one second and a lot of humans can't release the trigger in one second efficiently enough, so you're guaranteeing at least 44 or more rounds going into the air, even if only a third of those hit you, in the time it takes you to get out of the way. I don't know about you, Soap. I don't appreciate getting dinged 15 times in a row. Oh, I just don't. I do. Absolutely not. not. Not in one exchange, dude. It, it tends to set people off. It tends to, to you know, it's, even if you're a really level-headed player and you understand that mistakes are going to happen, you understand pain is a part of the sport sometimes, I'm sorry, we're humans, we're animals. Sometimes our, our brain is going to go, holy F crap, I'm going to freak oh out. Like, I mean, it's not going to Yeah. Like, so the high, like I said, there's a there's a valid portion, but to go like I want my gun to be a laser beam that literally ropes BBs at people, we are getting way out of the way out of I think perspective. Again, only opinion. I don't want no, to. I, I, no, I totally agree with you. And I think a lot of people, most not not all, but most people would too. You know, it's that that the whole overshooting thing. That's something I've encountered on occasion. Uh, I know. I'm sure we all have. I mean, you know, you. And it can go from the most innocent of, of things. You know, you come up, up behind a new player, his gun's on full auto, you, you, you know, come up, you scare him, surrender, and he freaks out and impulsively squeezes the trigger. And you just, man, just get blasted. Eh, okay, that's a moment, that's a moment for teaching. Yeah. Hey, buddy, you know, I, I'm going to call myself out because you hit me. I think you should do the same thing because I got the drop on you. Uh, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot so you don't blast somebody from close range like that. could have really hurt somebody. Okay, you know, but the guys that tune their guns for you know these 65, 70 rounds per second. First off, I would I would like to you know congratulations, well done, you know with the no that's that's amazing engineering. I will not take that away from people. That is, you yeah. have done it from a mechanical system point of view. You're on top of the game, man. Totally. Yeah, and that that to me is is truly impressive. But 
you're totally right in that, you know, if you get hit by, you know, guy hits a quick blast, you know, and you get hit by half, not even, not even a quarter of those. Well, 15 BBs, 10 BBs, that's, that's, that's enough to definitely set somebody off. That's like, you know, walking into a guy with a, a M203 who unleashes all 210 on you right in the head. It's like, okay, that just, to me, that's... From this far away from behind, you know, like that sort of thing. Yeah, like there's, there's, there's definitely a limit. I, I don't really want to get into it too much because I you know I'll end up going on about my personal thoughts on right lots of things. But um, I think rate of fire does have it does have a limit. Yep. You know the, the I'll pull it up again. My my baby here, my my Wii Mark 18. You know it's it's a gas gun. It's it's a Wii Tech. Ta da! Look, you know it's like it's done. It's um I think it shoots maybe twenty maybe twenty rounds a second. I don't know maybe. Um, but I know it shoots faster, it, or it, sh it shoots perfectly accurately the way I need it to. Right. And with regards to what you said about, um, you know, just the, the, the science of the game, the physics, uh, I, I agree and I don't. It, you know, it, it's true that you do need a couple extra, you might need a couple extra rounds um, to, to hit that target, whereas, you know, real, a real rifle, when you got it zeroed and you, you pull it up and you put your dot on target, and you bink, boom, you got him. I've definitely been in firefights where I'm like, why is my eighth shot not hit this guy? Uh, but I also believe that it's it's you know there's well, a limit that. to to how many BBs you need to be sending down range. Yep. Well, I think you said the operative word, so um, a couple. Let's. I mean, the, the way that we've kind of in my local community that we've kind of responded to it, um, and it really came out of you. Know, we were designing games or or uh, um, participating in games where there was either real-world ammo supplies uh, factored into the game or real, real capacity loadouts being, being factored in. Um, in terms of ammo supply games, what we found out from that is if we're going to supply forces with ammo and they have to go collect ammo in the field or you know, achieve objectives to get more ammo, I mean, how do, you, how do you present a number that is fair to people understanding that airsoft isn't like real steel? And what we what we kind of found with with a lot of experience um, and a lot of a lot of trial is that on if you know if all things considered on the average day four BBs could equal one bullet in real world uh, yep. if you are if your gun has been properly zeroed I mean from an airsoft standpoint if you've got it tuned the way you want it to and you're exhibiting good techniques again going back to that thing this is a tool how I operate it become makes it a weapon. So, I mean, if I need to shoot 20 BBs because I'm all like bang, 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 bang all over the place and I have no fundamentals, well, then, yeah, I could see how your argument would be, well, it's not like airsoft. I need to send 40 rounds down. Uh, it's not like not like real steel. I need to sound, send 40 rounds uh, or 40 BBs down range. It's not like that. I mean, again, yeah. it's, it's increased skill, and you'll see that you see those advantages other places, and you'll probably generally change your opinion about it. Um, but, yeah, you're absolutely right. The operative word that you said is that, while it's not one-to-one -one real steel, and it never will be. I mean, it won't become that unless these things have little explosions going off in the inside, like guns do. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, that's not going to start about those laws we're going to deal with. Oh, dude, that would be crazy. Um, I mean, but you know, but you can, you know, if you consider four to five. Now, let's really break that down. If you've got four to five BBs in the air, you've sent those four to five BBs down range because one or two of those might hit the person. You know, that's good average. That person is not going to be get, be angry about getting two BBs in them. That's a okay. natural thing that happens in airsoft. But if again, like you said, so I send five down range to hit. If I send forty five or fifty down range and fifteen to twenty hit, I'm going to be a lot angry and unhappy with getting hit with, you know, up to six times the amount of BBs I'm used to in one in, in one death. So Absolutely. I mean, I hate it. there's and a weird, there's a there's a comment here that I want to touch on. There's a comment here from. Uh, it's Arch Archangel, or Arch, yeah, Archangel FA18. It says problem isn't the uh, problem is that rounds per second is not regulated. FPS is uh, 15 BBs at 400 round, uh, Excuse me, 15 BBs at 400 FPS hurts more than three BBs at 500 FPS, assuming a reasonable engagement distance of 30 feet or greater. Uh, I I totally agree with that. You know, I, I think there's. You know, regardless of the pain threshold, there you know you get hit by 15 rounds. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna bother you. It's gonna bother you. Uh, period. I don't care if you're the toughest guy on the face of the planet. We all respond to pain in similar ways, and yeah. we all have th certain thresholds. And I bet you, for most people, except for maybe one percent of humans on the market, uh, 15 rounds to anybody in one select area, and that's that's another thing to consider. 
when those BBs hit you, they're not hitting you over just spread out of your body. It's not how the physics of this game works. You're going to get hit in a somewhat small area. Even if we talk, you know, we're talking a gigantic hit hit radius uh, because we're talking about airsoft. But if I get hit in the chest with 15 BBs, my chest is going to scream at me as an animal. It's going to yeah. think I'm dying. It's just going to be a fact of the matter. Right. And I, I want to just, real quick, I'm looking through the comments here, guys. Um, I know polar stars are a contentious issue. You know, we can <laughs> use gas blowbacks all day. Please keep it respectful uh, regarding the polar stars. You know, I think it's, everybody probably knows my personal opinion. Not a huge fan. I don't like the hose. Um, but, but there are guys out there who use them respectfully, or not, I mean, both respectfully and what I would consider properly. Um, you know, one of the guys commented, he's, he's, he's a good dude. You know, polar stars have their place. We're gonna, not even going to start on that just because it's a whole different issue. But let's just be respectful of everything that's out there. Yep. Um, let's see here. Let me go through a couple more comments. Hey, while um, you're looking at those, I'll just make one quick statement. I mean, my yeah. position on that one is, who cares? I mean, if you don't like polar star and someone else does, does it get both of you playing airsoft? Awesome. Go with what works for you. Now, you know, I get the argument with polar star. It's really easy to crank up and change all this, all the settings. Yeah. Great. I can do the same thing with a Wii Katana. I can do the same thing with a PTW. I can chrono, and then I can totally hot swap the cylinder of a PTW and screw a lot of people. Oh, that, yeah. doesn't make, that doesn't make Polar Star PTWs, uh, the person chronoing, uh, the, the technical limitations of the technology, uh, a bad thing. It makes the person doing that a bad person. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's period, and you're not going to get away from that, and it's not Polar Star's fault. It's not your preference's fault. It's that person's fault in the community. Period. Absolutely, and that's—I mean—that's that's certainly true with gas rifles. So you, you didn't mention them, but I want to make it a point. Please do. You, know, you look at these and you think, "Oh, it's hard to get inside," but you know, all I got to do, I chrono, I'm done. I pull my pin, pop out my bolt, and I can go bust out the impasse and yep. change it out. And now we've got—you know—I went from 400 to you know 500 something FPS, yep. and now I'm making a mess of this gun. Yeah, you screwed up the charging handle. Ha! Uh, it's all laughed. Uh, it's all laughed. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Boom, we're good. And you know, so so it's that's that goes back to attitudes in the community, you know, honor and integrity and all that things or those sort of things. You know, that's that's one thing that shameless plug. The DevTac, my guys, uh, my boys here. Yep, hello, yay. Um, one thing that we're really you know big on is the honor and integrity of the field. You know, does your gun shoot hot? Okay, can you turn it down? Because it's about you know safety and fun here. Um, one of the things that impresses me most is a guy that comes out and goes, oh yeah, it shoots exactly 400 or or even a little less, and I can hit targets 300 feet away. Well, good for you. That's awesome. Uh, way to keep it legal and safe and, and, and do something great. But the dudes that come out, you know, oh, my gun shoots 550. It's like, come on, guys, really? Like, you know, you've got a full auto 550 gun? Eh, I don't really, I don't really get the point. Right. Well, again, that's, it's that, it's that tendency with some personality types. It's, you know, it's a part of human nature that you can tap into this with the right personality type, and it's like it's one-up syndrome, or it's like you know material fact syndrome, where the credibility, the ability, the the reason to follow somebody or like somebody is all based on some sort of external factor. Yeah. Um, I mean, for our guys, for our local community, again, we're not big, and this this isn't to say that we're above anything. It's just something we've really worked hard at is establishing the mindset that like we don't walk in going, oh, what helmet is your helmet? Oh, that's not really a cry airframe? Well, we're no longer talking to you anymore. Uh, we Aww. don't even go into it that way. What we go into it looking for is players who do well for the community and players who are a problem for the community and trying to fix those. I mean, those are the really important issues, right? Um, I mean, to, to, again, much like the gear talk, specific technology setups within the sport, too, is kind of a moot, like a moot argument and that we get tied up in a lot. I know there's a lot of texts that say, this is the way to do something, and this is the way to do something, or some operator, you know, some flop operator, someone going, no, this is the gun setup that works, or this is the gear that works. You know what? It works for you. Let's stop arguing. Whatever that other guy's doing is not you. You don't have to worry about it. If it lets him play, let him play. If it doesn't let him play, he'll eventually leave anyways. You won't have to deal with him. So let's just get back to playing the game, right? Seriously. Seriously. Um, yeah, you know, that's... I want to touch on that last, that what you were just saying too. You know, one of the things with DevTech, we've gotten a lot of messages in the last couple of months about, you know, how do I join the team? What do I, what do I have to do? And occasionally we'll get a resume. I have this gear. I have this gun. And if you, if you look at our team, we've got a really diverse team. In that, our oldest player, 
well, we won't we won't go there. But he's, he's, he's <laughs> dad, you know, and uh, he's got three kids, and and the youngest is is one is his son, one of his sons, um, who is I think uh, belt high is is ten years old now, and uh, I could be wrong about that. Might be might be nine. I, I'm not quite sure. Don't quote me. But you know, we've got we've got people all over the whole range, and and while you know in the videos, most of what you see is is that core group of guys. It's me, Shaka, OTT, uh, Squirrel. Uh, who else is there? Uh, you know, Prodigy. Um, oh my God! If I forget anybody, I'm gonna be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, you're gonna get in so much crap. There's gonna be no more dance videos on on Instagram after this one. The all right, let's just, let's just name them all. We got Snake, we got Prodigy, we got Shaka. You know, but all the guys, you know, the guys that you see most in most of our videos, we're all, you know, well, I'm probably the oldest actually. And then you've got the guys who are, you know, high school, late high school age, about to start college. And um, but you know, we don't care about what your gear is as a team. We, if you, if you're wanting to join DevTech, the thing that we are most concerned about is would we hang out with you outside of this this sport? Would we be proud to call you a friend? And, and do you do good for this community? You know, you can like I, we have very few requirements. Um, we've got the pants, we've got the shirt, and that's it as far as uniform. The only other two things is we require you have a hydro uh, because that's a safety issue, <laughs> and that you uh, have a radio because. You know, it's a force multiplier. Um, beyond that, though, you know, we don't care what you run. No, that's 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 exactly it. And, and you know, just to reciprocate that, um, and much like you all make that joking statement, none of this is plugged. But I do want I want to touch on what Jamie is talking about. Jamie's another guy that, that rolls with us. He's not on our team, but he rolls with us quite closely. Um, we have that exact same dynamic in our team. Now we don't have anybody as young as as you guys do, like that that lower limit. Um, Again, it's it's a different scene in Canada. There's less, you know, people around the 10 years of age. They're slowly getting the sport, but it's it's not where they're they're ready to be on teams yet. But we've got, you know, we've got. I think our youngest guys are like 16 to 18, uh, and we've got a guy who's 56. I mean, Gary, <laughs> Gary's the father of our of our team leader, uh, Brock, who's one of my best friends. You know, he's my battle buddy 90% of the time. Uh, we share a lot of command duties in the fields. Uh, nice. Both of the same mindsets. He runs the store here in London for that. You know, I'm blessed to have access to and things like that. No, I don't get things for free. I wish I did. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's it's one of those things where, um, you know, we have a, a a wicked dynamic between those ages because where we start from, much like you, is not. Oh, can you shoot with this stance? Like, what's your forward C clamp look like? Or like, oh, do you have the new FC like PC? Oh no, then you can't join the team. Like. None of that factors in. Yes, we love to see where people are and as a baseline, but frankly put, I can train that shit into people, part of my French. I mean, I can teach somebody um, how to shoot well or to think better in a situational environment. Nine times out of ten, though, what I can't teach somebody to do is how to not be a dickhead. Uh, and that's that's a major <laughs> thing. <laughs> I can't do that nine times out of ten. There's the one one guy out of ten who just doesn't know any better, or he's doing it out of fear or anxiety or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'd rather I'd rather see good people. I mean, good people for the community. Good people Absolutely. that want to learn. You know, Th those are the places to start. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we actually let's see where are we at here? Oh my, we, we are, have gone way over like, over. So much for an hour. So much for an hour. All right. So let's get let's get a couple quick plugs in. Um, and then I want to. I want you to. You know, if you got your gear handy, show off a couple of your favorite pieces. Um, and of course, I'll do the same because I'm a gear whore. So, um, <laughs> real fast plug. Going back to you can't train somebody not to be a dickhead. Um, yeah. This weekend, for those of you guys that are in Southern California, uh, San Diego area, DevTech is going to be rolling out to the team therapist host up at uh, Mr. Paintball. The reason I mentioned the dickhead thing, uh, they have this great rule called Dickhead Overwatch, uh, and that's where. <laughs> if you're, yeah, dude. No, it's. It's it's brilliant. If you're caught being a dick, right, yelling at other people, calling their hits for them, screaming, you know, call your hits, bro, like what, you know, overshooting, team therapists will post one of their game control members with you, and follow you around, and be like, great job, this guy's sneaking really well, check him out, check him out, yeah, right. sneak right through there, right through there, no, they're right over there, right side, <laughs> yeah, great job, dude. So you can't, you know, you can't get away with it. Anyway, the dickhead Overwatch rule is brilliant. Um, I think I've seen it once. Uh, actually happen, uh, and, and that just goes to show the, cal the caliber of player that goes out to these games. It's, it's yep. usually really great. So Team Therapist, Sunday at Mr. Paintball USA here in San Diego, uh, up in Escondido. Uh, another plug, let's see here. Uh, Rob, actually, you've got you've got something big coming up. Yeah, I um, do. 
I told tell us about tell us about the oh, store, man. So I had this like crazy kind of epitome this week. I was, you know, I designed something for. I'm, I'm on a dodgeball team in my city here. It's a random kind of sport to play, but it, you know, it's a, it's an awesome use of a Monday night when you're when you're working as a full time person. Um, sure. It's a great. It's a great way to let out your Monday stress for sure. Let's call it that. So I'm a, I'm a graphic designer. Uh, in a lot of my time uh, as a corporate person, what I do is as a job. Um, that. Uh, you know, so I designed this dodgeball shirt, and I just inadvertently went, "Hey, Instagram crowd, look at this thing I designed for my dodgeball team." And uh, of course, everyone loved it, and everybody. Everyone, wanted to it was it weird. It was like, "I want to buy one," and I'm like, "They're not even for sale." So I was like, "Man, maybe I need to actually start something that that is kind of down this road." Uh, so what I am doing in in the course of since Sunday, so Sunday I designed what you've seen, and I'll I'll talk about it in a second, uh, yeah. and then. And then research and put into place the systems to actually roll this out within the last, uh, it's Thursday? Damn, last four days. Uh, I've secured a, a producer. I've secured a payment system. I've secured a website. Uh, I will be launching a clothing line um, called Robo. Airsoft clothing line. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's weird. I Never did I ever imagine I'd be designing clothing for, for some sort of way of giving back to the community or even one day, you know, allowing me to live off of airsoft somehow. Um, I mean, yeah, dude. You know, there's there's so many ways to do it, and that's that's, that's, that's it. It's, it's about finding where you know where you can fit in, and, and you know, let the balance, right? So, I'm releasing this uh, Robo Apparel. Uh, it, the site will be open tomorrow. I'm just there's doing some final testing. The URL. Yeah, the URL will be don't go yet, uh, or at least don't <laughs> buy anything. I'll, you're not going to succeed in buying anything. It's just going to send me an email testing the system. So. It, it is it is Robo uh, dash apparel R O B O dash A P P A R E L had to go back to grammar school there. <laughs> gotcha. Wow. Dot com. It's really simple. I mean, if you saw if anybody who's you know following me on Instagram or see me on or any of this my logo kind of floating around in the sphere the last week, it literally is just rope like how it appears in logo Robo dash apparel dot com. You'll see my sexy site right now. There's only one design on, uh, available. Uh, or will be available tomorrow. Um, there's two styles of shirt. One's a thinner, lighter shirt. Another one's a classic kind of cotton. Uh, and there's a couple varieties of colors that you can you can mix and match. Uh, that's going to be opening tomorrow. There's a lot of I guess traction and, and demand on it already, so I'm pretty excited. So, Absolutely, guys. Uh, if you're watching, it's up in the description now. So head over there, click the link, uh, or click it tomorrow, not tonight. But uh, it's in the description now. Again, again, you can. You can go and you can take a look. I mean, you can even go through the sales process. You just won't get anything sent to you. I'll just be having to send all these people emails going, you know you just sent me a test order, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know I know that uh, Lorenzo Go is going there right now. He's probably making his shot. Yeah, yeah he's Grizz is like, let me buy it now. <laughs> <laughs> totally. No, it's, yeah, so, so guys, check it out, robo-apparel.com. Uh, robo it's in the description. Check it out. Great designs. If you haven't seen them yet, head over and check it out now. Um, Rob, you got any good uh, any good gear for us? You want to show off? Oh yeah, man. Well, I guess the popular ones that everybody likes to see on my stuff is obviously. Whoa, I'm getting stuff with cotton all my other computer equipment here. Yeah. Know, this is the new, the new tactical rifle. Well, not it's not really a tactical rifle. I mean, I call it that, but uh, you know, it's what we call uh, you know the the big bad bad black rifles that are that love to be outlawed in New York State right now, right? Um, this has been a fun one. This is actually the gun I put uh, BTC um, Spectre MOSFET in. These are still pretty rare in the market. Um, I see, you know, Luke at, at Next Level Tactical gave him a shout out. Those guys do amazing things with BTC products. Uh, a lot of them are Chimeras so far, but same thing. This is just a little bit smaller of a microcontroller. Um, excuse me as I step away from, from the desk there for a second. Uh, okay. All right. I'll put it on my ugly mug for a second. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Ah, uh, well, while you're while you're walking away, I'll I'll just toss up one of my new little toys here. So yeah, go ahead, man. Got the uh, this is a Tokimori Garter Kit P two two six that I recently put together here. Ooh, kind of fun, you know. Got the little QR code on the trademarks. Surefire X three hundred, courtesy of uh, Carrie Welch uh, and Stitchworks. So Carrie's the man, by the way. Carrie Carrie's got it all. So lots of fun. Oh, my favorite touch is the the mock firing pin in the back there. So that's always fun. Nice. But, uh, and of course, the ultra bright tack light. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry guys. Completely white out the screen on that one. It's a fun one, man. It's a fun one. Um, yeah. What else you got for us? Um, the the key ones that everybody asks me about usually is again. So this is my 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 standard generic kind of CQB or Spec Ops kind of situation rifle. 
Do you want to one? It's a Frankenstein at this point. The kids love that one. Yeah. Uh, key notable pieces of my equipment. Now, this is actually a, it's more what I consider a range piece and not an, an active shooter piece, uh, but actually works really well in Airsoft if you're willing to spend the money on the name. And that is uh, the HSGI Costa Ludus leg or hip rig. Uh, nice. This is, it's a, literally a hip panel that comes pre-woven with uh, two, uh, two HSGI taco mags for M4s and three pistol mags already woven in there. The center pistol mag, obviously a lot of people drop flashlights, multi-tools, things like that in there. Um, other popular pieces here, P mags are always popular. Uh, but P mags get really popular when you start doing stuff like uh, if you can see the lighting there, like when you start stippling them and whatnot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I custom stippled all these. It generated a lot of conversation, you know, whether it was, man, that's awesome, or man, that's totally useful to people who were like, man, that's totally a waste of time because I don't understand how traction works or whatever, right? Um, <laughs> and along those same lines, do the same thing with with my Timberwolf. Not, I mean. By and far, not the best gun on the face of the planet. You know, it's I, I still love it. It's Echo One uh, and SOCOM gear, which is actually in turn manufactured by We. Um, yeah, but love love the Timberwolf frame. Love the extended tang or dovetail there. Love the straight pistol grip. And then what I did is, of course, again custom stippling, which literally turns it. As you can see, no mag cleared. Um, literally turns to like glue in your hands, especially if you're using bare hands. Or, again, if you're wearing gloves, it feels like you're wearing bare hands. You no longer have that leather slip that, or nice. that, that kind of suede slip. So, but, nice. and again, X300 on that. Oh, you got the X300? That's where it's at, man. All the all the flop raiders. You got to get your X300. You got to get your X300 on there, man. If you're wondering <laughs> where to get it, uh, you know what? I'll, put, I'll try and put a link in the description. Um, I've already updated it. We got DevTac, my team, my boys there. DevTech Airsoft, also yep. Rob's team over there, uh, the Airsoft operators. Definitely check them out. Give them some likes, guys. Let's uh, mm. let's get them up there. Uh, and Eric, I saw one of my teammates commented saying, I finally fixed it. The fun story about this, I bought the, the garter kit SIG off of him, and uh, it was not operational. Tore it apart, found a tiny little chip that rendered it broken in the frame. <laughs> Um, I, love I tried everything. I mean, like I work on SIGs all the time. This this was built literally from springs and pieces from scratch. Like, you know, I took it entirely apart. And uh, just to prove Eric that it works, because that was his comment. If you can't see, chamber is clear, right? See the purple? Yeah, purple's good. All right, no mat, uh, no BBs in the magazine here. So please, guys, safety, right? Uh, safe direction that way, right? Eric, it works. All right, so. It's good to go. She's a beast. I'm pleased. Got to give her a little nickname. But, uh, yeah, there's your proof. I'll loop, I'll loop in one small comment just because I'm that sort of father figure kind of guy in my team. Uh, I'll take the second to loop back into that safety stuff. Um, pistols are really important, guys. A lot of guys forget that there might be a, ch a round still in the chamber. Uh, you know, you can, take your, you can take your batteries out of an AG uh, or take out the mags in a GBBR and it'll render it completely useless. A lot of people forget that there might be a mag still in the bottom here. Start learning redundant safety processes. Again, apply firearm safety rules. Check for any rounds, both up and down into the mag well. Check the mag well itself. Cycle it clear. Point it in safe direction. Squeeze off the round to break the trigger um, just to make sure that everything's safe. I mean, again, that's just a little tidbit of safety advice in terms of pistols for since we're screwing around with ours. Uh, for anybody younger who doesn't do that sort of stuff uh, to pick up on. Absolutely. Absolutely. They said that you should call that gun the Erica, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's because, that's, because, that's because I got it from Eric. <laughs> I, don't know how, I don't know how I feel about that. It's, uh, it's a little weird. All right, maybe, maybe it'll be Erica. I don't know. We'll, we'll think of a good name for her. Um, guys, seen, seen a couple comments about the X300 here. Let me, let me pull it off for you. Um, you know, the... Yeah, GI has it. Uh, they're a great retailer, a good place to get it. Um, I got this one off of our, our buddy at Stitchworks, Kerry Welch. Kerry is the man. Uh, you know, I think he's got a website. I can't remember. But this thing is, it's got trademarks up the wazoo. I mean, hello. On the inside of the battery compartment. <laughs> that's pretty big. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's. And uh, the price that has been listed, uh, you know, in some of the comments for guys talking about GI, um, a bit less than half of that. 
So, yeah. you know, this this replica, I mean, you saw it, bl it blinded out the, the camera there. It's it's pretty bright. Um, I'm very pleased with it. I'll, I'll put the link up for you guys so you can grab one too. I'll uh, I think at this one. point... I'll back you up on that one before we cut off. I mean, again, yeah. I don't, I don't haven't dealt with a lot with Kerry yet, uh, but he's a great guy when I have. I mean, I personally have a lot of access here in Canada, great repros that are here in Canada. Um, but honestly, Kerry's got some of the best repros I've seen in North America. Period. Absolutely. And, and you know, the irony of this whole thing here is we're sitting here talking about you know buying real gear and, and fake gear and yeah, we've, we've got repro flashlights. Right? So, <laughs> <laughs> oh well, what can what can you do? All right, well, you know what, at this point, uh, I'm going to plug my team real fast, guys. I've talked about it a couple times, DevTech. Um, you know, this team, I founded it starting uh, starting just because we wanted to put it together, a group of guys that I thought really exemplified, uh, you know, San Diego's, San Diego's best, Not maybe not best players, but good guys that I really enjoy, and I think that, that really stand out in the community. Um, I, I'm really honored to have been a part of this team and, and seen how fast we grow, or we have grown, rather. We hit 1,000 likes nine months in, and that means that means a lot. I'm not going to give away a lot right now because we are going to do a video, a real video for this. But for those of you that are following the team, you're going to want to start pushing us towards that 1,500 like mark. Uh, we've got, we haven't done any any giveaways yet, so of course the first one has to be a pretty big one. Um, there's your hint. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but uh, we're going to let the genie of the model on that one. Yeah, I think I think that should be a decent uh, a decent giveaway for or a little little hint for now. Uh, that being said, you know, I, Rob, I just want to thank you for coming and, and checking in with me here and chatting. Um, anytime, anytime. You know, it's been, been a pleasure. Yeah, and definitely. To all you guys watching, uh, thank you so much. It really means a lot. You know, I, I wasn't sure we could pull this off. We had some technical difficulties, but it happened. We figured it here out. We are. Yeah. As old, as old cats, we figured it out. <laughs> oh man, and uh, now I'm like totally tripping over my keyboard. Okay, there we go. Switching between the screens. Yeah, so um, thank you again, guys, for coming out. We're going to make this, uh, try to do it maybe bi-weekly or weekly. Next time, we'll, we'll open it up and get a few more of you guys in. i I got to be honest, I had no idea how to add people into this, so my bad. Well, uh, and, but so I think we were trying to control yeah. it a little bit too. Smart choice, you know, so. Definitely. So I think we got it. Um, at that point, we're going to end it. Thank you guys so much for coming and watching. Rob, thank you for coming and Thanks, chatting Rob. with me today. No problem. Um, Go out there, guys. Play this weekend. Uh, you know, flop right hard and play with honor and integrity, and spread that spread that uh, awareness of safety, and make sure that everybody feels included when you're out there. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, so.